In the 1470s, the Swiss earned their infamous reputation as some of the most sought-after mercenaries in Europe. In the Burgundian Wars, the old Swiss Confederacy and its allies were confronted with an ever-expanding, ambitious Burgundian duke, who tried to carve out his own kingdom between France and the Holy Roman Empire. But this is not a simple story. It is not merely a narrative of a defensive war against an overwhelming enemy. The Swiss were quite ambitious themselves. This video is the first in a series and explains how present-day historiography recounts the beginning of the Burgundian Wars. On their way home from a campaign in Sundgau and the Black Forest, the Swiss laid siege to the Habsburg city of Waldshut. They first cannonaded the Habsburg city on the 29th of July, 1468. At that point, they had laid siege to the city for a week. In addition to the bombardment, the besiegers redirected the waterways to the city and deployed ships on the River Rhine to shoot at the city from there. The situation in the city became very dire, very quickly. The walls took severe damage because of the ongoing bombardment. And meanwhile, Sigismund of Habsburg, who ruled over further Austria and the county of Tyrol, was unable or unwilling to start a relief campaign. It isn't entirely clear why he didn't intervene. But this gave the Swiss plenty of time to plan an assault. They scheduled to storm the city on the 19th of August. However, the assault was first postponed because of internal disagreements and then cancelled because intermediaries convinced both parties to sign a peace treaty on the 27th of August. This peace, however, was not to hold for long. The Swiss broke their siege, but Sigismund had to pay them 10,000 guilders in reparation. According to the expert on the Burgundian Wars, Claudius Sieber Lehmann, Sigismund couldn't pay off this bill with his own reserves. Therefore, he turned to Charles the Bald, Duke of Burgundy, who not only offered the needed financial support, but also controlled an impressive military power. Sigismund hoped that Charles would give him a loan and help him to restore the territories he had lost to the Swiss in earlier conflicts. Charles agreed to the loan deal in the next year, in the Treaty of Saint-Omer. Sigismund borrowed 50,000 guilders from Charles. In return, Charles was pledged the territories of Alsace, the southern Black Forest and the four Waldstädte. They also entered a defensive alliance, which obliged Charles of Burgundy to help Sigismund of Austria against all enemies. However, Charles was quite ambitious on the political stage. He never intended to restore the pledged land. Quite the contrary, he wanted to expand his realm, incorporate missing pieces to his territory and eventually create a kingdom. Sigismund's pledged territories fitted perfectly into the borders of the Burgundian kingdom he wanted to carve out for himself. These territories and the Duchy of Lorraine were the missing pieces to connect his territory in the north to his possessions in modern-day Burgundy. In order to reach his goals, Charles reformed his army, which was one of the most modern military forces of his time. He replaced the common feudal levies with properly recruited soldiers and structured them along the French model in companies of ordnance. The core of this army were mercenaries who bowed to strict discipline. The smallest squad was the so-called Lance. 100 Lances formed a company. By the end of 1474, Charles had extended his army to 22 companies and a large number of modern artillery. In addition, the Burgundian nobility didn't serve according to social hierarchy any longer. They filled leading functions determined by military need and merit. This anticipated, to some degree, the later function of officers. In short, Charles' army kept more than pace with the times. Claudius Sieber Lehmann stresses the fact that the new territories made Burgundy an immediate neighbor of the old Swiss Confederacy. Burgundy used to have loose yet friendly relations with the Swiss in the past. But after Charles' expansion, the city-state of Bern feared that their new neighbor would cut off crucial trading routes through the Swiss plateau. From the 1960s onwards, historians such as Karl Bittmann argued that the city of Bern contributed plenty in compelling Charles to go to war. 
In contrast, older research characterized Charles as Western counterpart of Sultan Mehmed II as Bösen Türken von Burgund, the evil Turk of Burgundy, who was defeated by the small yet brave Swiss underdog, which of course is a misleading narrative. Bittmann showed that Charles' demonization served both as a legitimization for the campaigning against him and the lacking participation of the Swiss in a crusade against the Ottomans. However, in the meantime, Sigismund grew dissatisfied with Charles, because the latter sought to keep peace with the Swiss rather than fight them, even though they were clearly an enemy of Austria. Sigismund realized he wouldn't get his part of the diplomatic treaty and that he wouldn't be able to fight the Swiss by himself. Thus, true to the motto, if you can't beat them, join them, Sigismund entered negotiations with the All Swiss Confederacy. On the 30th of March, 1474, they agreed on the so-called Ewige Richtung, or Perpetual Accord. A treaty of peace and alliance, which ended the many years of hostility between the Swiss Confederates and House Habsburg. The arbiter of that new alliance was King Louis XI of France, quite appropriately an arch enemy of Burgundy. Only one day later, the Swiss Confederacy entered yet another alliance, the Niedere Vereinigung, or Lower League, consisting of the Swiss, Sigismund, as well as the cities of Basel, Colmar, Strasbourg, Celesta, and the bishoprics of Basel and Strasbourg. In other words, those who suffered most because of Burgundian raids and assaults. Some days later, Sigismund cancelled the Treaty of Saint-Omer. When Charles refused to accept this and to return the pledged territories, Sigismund and the Lower League declared war on Burgundy. Within the ranks of the Old Swiss Confederacy, initially only the city of Bern wanted to intervene militarily. Bern was deceivingly spurred on by Louis XI, who hoped that the conflict would destroy his enemy Burgundy. At his instigation, the Old Swiss Confederacy entered yet another alliance, this time with France, in October 1474. Later this year, the Legislative and Executive Council of the Swiss Confederacy, the Tagsatzung, in English known as Federal Diet of Switzerland, agreed to participate in a preventive war against Burgundy, together with Sigismund and the Lower League. However, they insisted not to be listed as an official belligerent, but only as an auxiliary party. Now, an armed confrontation became ever more likely. Shortly after, 18,000 men of the Old Swiss Confederacy and their allies marched towards Alsace in two armies. On the 8th of November, they arrived at the gates of Erigur, a city which was quite important because it controlled the route from Sundgau to franche comte Thus, the Swiss laid siege to it. As the Burgundians learned about this, they sent a relief army of 12,000 men towards Erigur. When the besiegers took notice of the approaching troops, they turned away from the city and attacked the Burgundian army north of the city on the 13th of November. The Swiss pike squares and the Habsburg cavalry defeated and decimated the Burgundian army in two battles. Seeing the relief force defeated, the garrison of Erigur stroked its colors. Because the Swiss participated as auxiliaries, the spoils of this campaign went to Sigismund. Despite all of this, Charles, who was at the time besieging the city of Neuss, wanted to keep peace with the Old Swiss Confederacy. In Bern, however, the war party overruled the moderates. The Bernese now turned their attention towards Vaud, which belonged in large parts to Savoy, an ally of Burgundy. But the Federal Diet of Switzerland had prohibited a war against Savoy. However, in March 1475, a bellicose gang of plunderers from Bern, Lucerne and Solothurn, who just couldn't keep their weapons sheathed, invaded Burgundian territory in the north of Savoy, plundering and ravaging the lands as they passed. After they had attacked the city of pont by storm, the plunderers got into trouble and the Swiss were pressed to reinforce them with an official army mainly consisting of Bernese. However, the Burgundians had already retreated when they arrived. The official army decided spontaneously to march on to the northern parts of Vaud.
The Bernese enterprise was largely improvised and had two main goals. Firstly, to seize fortresses in order to form a western defensive line against the attack they expected from Charles. And secondly, to provoke the Duchess Yolanda of Savoy to officially declare war on the old Swiss Confederacy. This would have legalized the reckless Bernese raids and western expansion. Looting and burning as they passed, the troops of Bern conquered Grandson, Orbe and Junier and then retreated. In 1475, Charles and the Holy Roman Emperor buried the hatchet. Charles abandoned the siege of Neuss in defeat and then campaigned in the Duchy of Lorraine. According to the Swiss historian Regula schmidt kehling this was key to Charles' plans. Quote, Charles did what he could to connect his territories. However, in between was René II of Lorraine, Charles the Bald thus did all he could to get rid of René. End quote. Now the lower league feared that Burgundy would turn its attention towards them. Bern sent 1,400 men to franche comte These troops conquered Lille, Blamont and Gramont. At this point, the other members of the Federal Diet of Switzerland were fed up with Bern's provocative, quarrelsome and ruthless behavior. Up until the end of the war, the Confederacy insisted to participate only as auxiliaries, not as full belligerents. They only joined the war because of their contractual obligation to support Bern in case of an enemy attack. Bern, however, was not very impressed by the Swiss Confederate descent and launched yet another attack into Vaud. According to Claudius Sieber Lehmann, they successfully conquered 16 cities and 43 castles in a quick and bloody campaign. The inhabitants of these places even had to swear an oath to their new Bernese masters. In order to keep costs as low as possible, only the strategically important cities of Grandson, Yverdon and Morat were kept under garrison to secure the border. Simultaneously, a bit further south, the Republic of the Seven Zenden, a part of modern-day Valais, led two unsuccessful forays into Savoyer territory. Duchess Yolanda of Savoy answered this aggression promptly. On the 12th of November, she arrived in Comté, with an army of 8,500 foot soldiers and 1,500 mounted nobility. The city of Sion, the first stronghold of the Seventh Zenden, was defended only by 300 men and reinforcements of about 3,000 to 4,000 men were only just arriving. The battle began in the morning of the 13th of November 1475, when the Savoyard army crossed the river Morche and routed the vanguard of the Valais after a quick encounter. Simultaneously, a small band of Savoyards pushed forward along the mountain flank towards the village of Saviese, defeated the few defenders and plundered the surrounding villages. The main army now advanced towards Sion and invaded the western part of the city. The reinforcements of the Valais now finally arrived and chased the Savoyards out of the city. Yolanda's army regrouped in the village of La Planta. The ill-equipped men of Valais followed them but couldn't do much against the Savoyards in open field, and thus their troops seemed to disintegrate. But now, 3,000 volunteers from Bern, Solothurn and Fribourg approached crossing the pass of Sanetsch in direction of Saviese and threatened the left flank of the Savoyard army. The retreating men of Valais were requested to turn back to battle. Those who tried to flee were killed. To protect their flank, the Savoyards moved slightly to the west whereupon the Swiss attacked them immediately from the front. They clashed on a field near La Planta. After a fierce struggle, the Savoyard army fled in panic, leaving behind more than a thousand fallen men and rich booty. The victors chased them till nightfall and occupied Conté. In the following days, they advanced further and conquered the lower parts of the valley to Saint-Maurice, and the strategically important Great St. Bernard Pass. On the 1st of December, the Seventh Zenden signed an armistice with the Yolanda of Savoy. Two weeks later, a major disruption on the political stage changed the situation drastically. The French king concluded a nine-year-long peace with his arch-enemy Charles of Burgundy. Now, both the Holy Roman Emperor and the French king were at peace with Charles of Burgundy. The old Swiss Confederacy saw itself standing almost alone against the mighty Burgundian Duke. 
Despite all provocations, Charles, surprisingly, still wanted peace with the Swiss. But Bern let him know that it could only accept the offer if its allies, the Lower League and the Duchy of Lorraine, were also included in the peace. Charles declined because he didn't want to relinquish Alsace under any circumstances. War was bound to come.